Alright guys, it's been a while since I've made a new video and I think this one's long overdue. If you used any of my prior videos that basically walk you through creating a new Xbox One drive, you'd notice that the boot animation when you first start up the drive disappears. So what I'm going to show you is a system here that's missing the boot animation and how we're going to fix it. So let's get started here. So we're going to start the system up. You'll see there by my green fan that it started. You'll see the no signal, uh, the no signal screen should go away any moment now. And now this is normally where you'd see the green boot animation, and as you can see, it's just black. But any moment now, the the uh, dashboard will show up. Okay, and there you go. And as you can see, I've been playing uh, Hat in Time, which is an uh, excellent game, by the way. Anyway, so there you go. So that's the system booting up without a boot animation. So it's something we're going to need to fix. Now, if you uh, are patient enough and are willing to wait for the next update to come out, that will generally fix your boot animation issue. Uh, the next update will basically resolve the issue. If you want to fix the issue right away, then follow my steps here. And you'll see what I mean by that in a second when I show you what the actual fix is. So we're going to shut the system down here. And we're going to switch over to our screen. Let's let this shut down completely. Okay, and we're going to go to our desktop here in a second, uh, but first we need to get the hard drive out. Unfortunately, that's the one of the primary steps here to actually fixing this problem. And we're going to unplug the power here. This is the older Xbox model, and I, I have a very tight workspace here right now, so I don't have enough room to show the entire system uh, basically in one shot. But should be enough to, it should be fine just to show the process here. Uh, generally whenever I'm working on an older Xbox One, or at least the original Xbox One, this is generally how I'll get it down to the troubleshooting level where I just attach the faceplate and put the top on but leave most of the rest of the system off. And we're going to pull this off and disconnect the network cable plug. And now we have access to our hard drive here. And I already have everything unscrewed, so basically I can just lift this hard drive up and disconnect it. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hook this up to our PC. And uh, what I'm going to do is use the USB connection cable here. In a moment you should hear that connection noise. There you go. Okay, so for the time being we'll leave the hard drive here. And now I'm going to close the outer screen here just so you can see everything in full screen. But basically what we need to do now is get a hold of the boot animation file. Now I put it in a couple places. I added it to my Google Drive which is linked in the description. And also I created a uh, file trip uh, file trip download for you as well. So we can just click download file here and save the file. You can see the file itself is about 32 megabytes. Or we can go to our Google Drive, right click, right click and just say download. And again we can download it. Now I'm not actually going to download it here because I've already done so. So if we go over here to our downloads folder, here's our boot anim file. Okay, so what we're going to do is after we've downloaded this file we're going to right click it and we're going to say copy and then we're going to go to our Xbox One drive here and I'm not sure why it's showing up as duplicates there but that's okay what we're looking for is the system update so in this case it's the X drive it may be something else for you but this is generally where I've shown in many of my videos where you put your OSU1 update and that's in the A and B folders 
Now, for whatever reason, the osu1.zip doesn't include the uh, boot anim file, and therefore you need to grab it separately or wait for the next system update uh, because I believe that will put it back. And the reason I say that is I intentionally removed the boot anim file from A and B folders, but when I came into the system, which was working fine, the, this file was actually in both. So that's what you're going to want to do here. You're going to want to put the, the boot anim in the B folder and in the A folder. And that's pretty much all there is to it. One more thing worth mentioning is that on occasion, or in your case, you might actually see a boot anim.dat file already existing in the A or the B folders, but you'll see the size will be smaller than the 32,000K or 32 megabyte file that you see here. It'll be much smaller. In, in that case, you just want to overwrite the file with the one that you downloaded from the links that I gave you in the description. And that should take care of the, the problem. So it'll either be missing or it'll be smaller than the file that you see here. In either case, you either want to copy it in or you want to replace it. Okay, so we're now we're going to safely eject our disk here. So we're going to click on that little USB icon and say eject. And it should close our window here and we get the safe to remove hardware message. Okay, so now we're going to go back to our cam. So you can see us, we're going to disconnect this guy from the computer. Okay, and we can also show, uh, close our display there. And we will put the hard drive back in. Try to be careful about this, we're never going to do all the steps, but I guess we would connect our hard drive up. And then make sure that we connect our network cable here on the bottom to this part here. See where the my finger's pointing there. Our case on. We're going to want to reconnect our antenna cable. And then our speaker cable. I left the front panel connected already, so we're just going to put this up so it doesn't accidentally get pressed while we're testing the machine out. And uh, re plug in our power here off camera. Okay, so we're going to start this up again and see if we get our boot animation back. On uh, these older models, as soon as you plug them in, it feeds power through the system, which is why uh, the, the fan started up before I even turned on the system. This is a custom fan. I've shown that in one of my older videos. But there you go. So we got our boot animation back. So basically that's how you do it. You can download the files I'm offering or just wait for the next update, and then you should be good to go. Um, if you're willing to stick it out for a few more moments here, I'm going to show you, or at least hint at, what my next video is going to be, which I plan on releasing very soon. Okay, so we're all logged in. And what I want to show you... Go into settings here, and we're going to go down to system, and we're going to go down to storage. And you can see here for the storage, we have, uh, well, we have a, basically a four terabyte drive. I don't know, I, I forgot to point it out, but the drive I was moving around was actually a four terabyte drive. You might be able to see it in the video, maybe you can make it out, maybe you can't. Probably not, considering how small I have the video, but uh, so I have a script that I just completed today or version of the script that I just completed today. I've been working on it for a couple of weeks now that uh, steps you through actually creating a larger than two terabyte drive. And this is basically the result of that. Um, just to show you really quick that 
even though it's a four terabyte drive, I can still load games. In a second here, you should sort of see a startup logo. I'll take it that far. But um, just to give you a quick idea for the new features, so we're going to go back to our display capture here. And I just want to show you uh, basically what the new script entails. So let's bring this over here. So on this Windows 10 system, I have two command prompts. Uh, let me hide the camera footage. Okay, so let's give you a quick overview of the script here. There's a few common issues that people ran into that I, that I hope to have addressed in this. One is the uh, basically people seeing the no USB SATA drive found and that was caused by either not having administrator privileges to the command line or uh, not having the English language installed. And I have two windows here. One is a, a normal user and we're going to run the script as a normal user here and we can see immediately that the uh, script fails the, complaining that uh, first it checks the administrative permissions required detecting permissions current permissions inadequate please run the script using run as administrator and that's what we have up here in the the, the, the box above and let's run the script again uh, but this time it's administrator so you can see this time the test actually passes and there's an extra check that comes right after that where it's looking for the English language being installed and uh, if it finds it it will uh, it will let you continue otherwise it will give you instructions on what you need to do to get the English language installed um, so we'll move on to the next step which should look familiar now this is the big change in in the script uh, going forward, in fact, uh, the script from version 5 to version 6 is basically doubled in size. Uh, I've added a bunch more new features, uh, but the main thing I wanted to add was support for drives larger than 2 terabytes. And basically, selection A here is the old version of the script, so basically it allows you to create a standard 500 or 1 terabyte or 2 terabyte drive. Which, uh, which is still relevant and something most people are going to want to do. But then we have all these steps below that. So we have step B, which is replace, upgrade, keeping original drive data. So you can upgrade to a standard 2 terabyte, for instance, from a 500 gigabyte. And step B will assist you in the process of actually copying your data. So you have both drives attached at the same time, and you copy the data from one to the other. It also allows you to do a non-standard 3, 4, 5 terabyte drive. Uh, and, and actually copying your 500 or 1 terabyte or 2 terabyte data to that new larger drive. And uh, step C is the, and that's actually you know the main purpose of the new version of the script is, is actually the, the B option there. Um, but the C option is, is, is uh, also an important step. I'll get into that more when I actually have to, uh, when I show you how the script actually works. But, um, but that allows you to basically fix the GUID values of the drive. So say you have a, um, a drive that you want to convert to being an official 2 terabyte drive, but maybe you cloned it from a 500 gigabyte drive and, and, and messed around with the partition sizes. You can use C here to just update the GUID values of all the partitions and not have it destroy your data. And then option D allows you to run uh, uh, file system check on the NTFS partitions. Again, that was another issue in the past where if you pull your Xbox One drive out of your system and you try to use Clonezilla uh, against it, it'll fail because the partitions are considered dirty. So D allows you to just basically select a drive that you want to check the uh, file systems and uh, mark them as clean. And Lastly is the E option, which allows you to just basically wipe a drive entirely, and uh, you're back to a blank drive. Okay, and uh, F just cancels. So you can see there's a lot more functionality in the new script, and um, I hope to have that ready to go soon. At this point, the script is working. As you can see, I created the, the three and a half or the four terabyte drive, um, equivalent to a three and a half of usable space drive with the script already, 
using my working two terabyte drive or my official standard two terabyte drive and that's why I displayed here so the next step is to create a Linux version of this and update the documentation I hope to have that done pretty shortly and um, once that's complete uh, I'll do a full video on the entire process but I wanted to let you know at this point that I've made a lot of progress and um, and there's really nothing keeping us from putting drives much larger than two terabytes in our systems um, so but I'll get into some of the caveats there are a few things that 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 you will lose uh, or some functionality you'll lose with uh, the larger drives but that mostly has to do with just resetting the drives themselves but uh, as far as the drives being used themselves they should work just fine Anyways, I think that's enough about that, and uh, I uh, have a lot of videos coming up in the near future, uh, some upgrade videos and some, uh, just a whole bunch of stuff that I'm working on, so I hope to get those out soon. All right, talk to you later, and uh, we'll see you in my next video.